My daughter came home from school the other day and told me that she'd made a magic eight ball program in Python. And when she showed it to me, it looked um, a little something like this. Um, so let's have a look at how this works. Um, so it's got um, three variables, answer one, answer two, and answer three. Her magic eight ball only had three possible responses. Uh, it imports the, the random function and then it asks a question and then it picks a random number and gives us a response based on that number. So if I uh, click run and ask a question, so uh, will it uh, rain today? Uh, very doubtful. Okay, so it's, it's as we know, it's just a random response. It's not um, actually answering my question. It's just disregarding uh, anything that I've entered. Um, so, but how's it working? So it's generating a random number from one to three, and if the um, response is one, or the, if the number generated is one, then it's going to display response one, and if it's two, it's going to display response two, and if it's three, it's going to display response three. Is that the best way to do it? Well, it obviously works. Um, when we think about how good a program is, one of the things we might want to think about is how efficient it is. So if you think about what efficiency means in general terms, it's um, can we get the job done with the minimum amount of resources? So for example, energy efficient light bulb produces the same amount of light with um, less electricity and um, you know, a fuel efficient car will go the same distance using less fuel. And in computing terms, the resources available to us are things like memory, time, um, storage space. So an efficient program will use less memory and um, it will run more quickly, so we can measure things like that. The other thing to look at is how clear uh, is the program? How maintainable is it? is it? Is it easy to see what it's doing? And can we extend it? So let's have a look at this one. Well, um, is it storing things unnecessarily? Well, yes, I suppose what you could do is instead of storing three using three variables to store the text, it could just print the text straight off. That would save ourselves three variables, save ourselves three lines of code. Um, we don't necessarily need this if at the end. So instead of doing that extra check, we could just have an else, because if we're only generating numbers from 1 to 3, then after we've checked for 1 and 2, 3 is the only thing left. Um, so we could uh, remove that. But it wouldn't really affect the, the running of the program. Um, if we look at this, though, if you think about what the kind of computer's internal monologue is like when it's running this, it's saying, uh, think of a number, 1 to 3, is that number one? If it is, then say this. If it's two, then say this. If it's three, then say this. But the computer already knows what the number is. Why is it asking me if it's one when it already knows that it might be three? So that's a lot of checking unnecessarily, it would seem. So maybe a clearer way to do it is how you might do it um, ordinarily. You might offer somebody a choice. You say, uh, which choice do you want? They say, I want choice three. And you just give them the one you want, the one they want. You don't say, oh, well, if you wanted choice one, then it's this. And if you wanted choice two, it's that. And if you wanted choice three, it's this. So um, let's have a look at how you can do that using um, Python. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this text, this, this code, into um, another program. And we're going to change it. So what the first thing I'm going to do is, rather than storing the answers in separate variables, I'm going to create a thing called a tuple. And a tuple is basically a list, or like a set, of answers. Um, the difference between a set, uh, sorry, the difference between a tuple and a list is that lists can be changed and tuples can't. So um, in this particular case, because we're using it for reference, we're never going to change it. We're not going to update the values in the list, so a tuple is fine. And in practical terms, the only difference is the shape of the bracket that you use. So square brackets for a list, um, ordinary parentheses for a tuple. Um, I'm still going to ask the question. And, well, in my original program, because I'm checking the response value three times, if I'd have just said, if randint 1 comma 3 is 1 and if I'd have done that three times like so the danger would be um, that we'd actually get three different numbers that we'd be comparing with so we do in that case need to store the answer but because in my new version of the program I'm not I'm only going to use the, that random number once I don't actually need to store it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this number 
as an index into the list. So, or the, the tuple. So the number, the, the items in a tuple or a list are numbered and they start at zero. So um, answer zero is it is certain. Answer one is ask again later. And answer two is very doubtful. So this behaves pretty much like um, you'd expect if you were to ask a person which option they want. So now, if I say I want option two, it can just give me option two. It's not going to say, do you want option one? Do you want option two? So um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to print. I'm going to print the answer with the index generated by the random number. So random number. And I'm going to change my random number slightly because they're numbered 0, 1, and 2 rather than 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to generate a number between 0 and 2 rather than between 1 and 3. But other than that, it's basically the same. Okay, so I've got my list of options. I'm going to ask a question and then I'm going to print a random item from that list. So will it rain today? Ask again later. So it's, it's doing the same job. Obviously, it's giving me a different answer this time because it's random. But if we compare the length of our programs, then we can see that the original program had 13 lines. And this one has got five lines. And one of those is blank. Um, so, OK, it's a lot shorter. I would say it's a lot more like how you would think of that. So I, somebody says, which option do you want? Not one or two. They say two. You just give them two. You don't ask them whether they wanted one. Um, but also, and this is really, really uh, you really gain from using this method. It turns out, according to Wikipedia, um, that uh, a magic eight ball actually has 20 answers. So if you wanted to include all 20 answers in our program, if we're using if, we'd have to extend it a further um, well, we've got three here, so further 17, uh, th further 34 lines, because there's two lines required for each response. And in fact, if we stored all those in, var in variables as well, that would be a further 17, so an extra 51 lines of code altogether to be able to cope with the full 20 um, line, uh, full 20 responses that the Magic 8 ball can give us. However, if I do it using this program here, if I make one small change to the program, so if instead of saying two there, I actually check what the length of the, the length of the answer is, the length of the answer list. So if I say length answer will tell me how many items in that list. We just need to take one off because if there's three items in the list, the end one is number two because we start counting at zero. So if I run this now, so um, does she love me? Very doubtful. Um, so um, it's still working. However, what this means now is that if I add an extra item to the list, so um, as I see yes, for example, um, all I need to do is add that to my tuple. I don't need to make any changes to my code. And potentially, it will give me See if we can get that answer. Now, the downside of picking a, a random item from a list is that it might take a while to. There we go. Um, so, all we need to do is add the extra options to our tuple, and we don't need to change the code. So, the full 20 options can still be done in five lines of code, whereas doing it with if would require an extra 51 lines of code.